Hello, everyone. I'm Mia Dene with The Real TheRealEffect.tv. Um, I am really looking forward to talking to you guys. I really enjoyed the movie, A Holiday Chance, which is coming out uh, to, into theaters on November 24th. Um, I really felt that the movie was like extremely relatable. I didn't feel like it was too cheesy. It didn't feel like too corny. It wasn't like some of the Christmas movies that I come across. And I would love to talk to you first, Mr. Richard Lawson, about you know, the script and what did you relate to the most when you first came across the script? Well, in reading the script, first of all, it was a page turner. Uh, it kept my interest and um, going forward, which is the first thing for me is that, do I have to put something down and come back to it, put it down and struggle through it? it you know, I got through the script real easy because it was well-written. Um, it, uh, it, it was a black project with producers, directors, cast, that was incredibly inviting. It was, it was, uh, Nafisa was, uh, was produced it and, and created this project. That was exciting. And you want to support something like that. And I knew that, that it was going to be a good project. I just had a great feeling from, from picking up the script to the first day on set. And I love the, I love the story. I love the uh, family aspect and the challenges that the story presented. Beautiful. Um, Nafisa, I saw that you posted that, you know, when you put this production together, you reached out to a lot of friends. And I would love to know, you know, what are some of the most memorable moments? Like Mr. Richard Lawson said, like it was just a, a good time on set for you. What was the most memorable part about shooting this production? I, the most memorable and in, in... <sighs> gratifying blessing of this to be able to hire my friends right like I had my closest friend head of the hair department all my actor friends who I know are ta talented and I know who deserve to be in a great story telling a story about us it was just great to be able to call all of my friends I started with Tobias in New York when I first started out so to be able to call him and say hey you're perfect for this can you come and I mean literally some of my best friends are in the movie and it's not because they're my best friends um it's not because they're only my best friends because uh, I, I think when we're in a position we are supposed to reach back and give others an opportunity and that's what this was for me so this project was way bigger than me um when i when i was i talked to mr richard about this i got really nervous about doing it and i was like should i do this am i ready uh god spoke to me and said that this was a lot bigger than myself so i just i just went with that it's, it's not even about me it's about all of us and to be able to tell a story um, of a wealthy black family who's not perfect but who loves each other enough to get through their difficult challenges Nice. I love that. And like continuing off of that, because I went through a little deep dive on your IG. And so I loved all the posts that you put up about, you know, filming. But one of the things that really connected to me that you said that, you know, you manifested this. And so I would love to know what is one specific thing that you didn't actually manifest with this production, but it still came to you anyways. Wow. Um, what did I what manifested that I didn't intend for it to or ask for it to. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that we would be able to film this movie in LA. I, I thought maybe we had to go to Atlanta to do it. So the blessing of filming in LA and I haven't filmed in LA in over five, six years at this point. So it was great to see all of us beautiful brown people in Bel Air and in Santa Monica and having these beautiful locations and telling these beautiful stories for us by us. That was the biggest blessing of it all to, to, to bring our story to Hollywood. We didn't have to go somewhere else. We, we Hollywood had to deal with us. <laughs> I love that. So Janelle, I love you on Wu-Tang and I feel like with that, you're definitely more serious when you're playing Jizza, but this character, you brought like that comedic aspect. So was that a stretch for you or is that just a part of your regular character? People sound funny. I don't see it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll be serious. Like when I be telling Joe or whenever I be talking, I'll be serious. So for people to sound funny, I'm like, all right, maybe I do got a knack for it or Maybe it is something. I'm still learning, you know, the little nuances of this stuff. So it's like, like the last day she said, yo, you, you do got some comedic things about you. It's something to really take, pay attention to. But yeah, it was it was a transition playing Jizza all year and then coming to a whole different comedic role. So, but 
I, I love roles that challenge me. So I think Nafisa for allowing me to take this role on and, and grow as an actor, as a thespian. So yeah, it was fun. Dope. So last question, I would love to know from each of you, if you could go back and cast yourself into a Christmas movie, what movie would it be? And what character would you play? So Mr. Richard Lawson, let's start with you. I would play this part right here. <laughs> Perfect. I would Perfect. I would do the sequel of this or the prequel. I would mm. do the prequel because the prequel is about how they got there. See, there's a lot of other stories you could do, but this is mm -hmm. about a successful man who to see how he had to roll his sleeve up and struggle and deal with the business early on and have his kids a part of it, you know. So we'd be doing flashbacks because I wouldn't want somebody else to play Nafisa younger. So it would be like going back and forth so I can get a chance to work with her a second time or that otherwise I have to write another movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I like that answer. I'm, I'm right to that. I'm gonna follow my daddy. Hey, that's part right there. <laughs> but I just appreciate. I just appreciate that I was here to help implement this. You know what I'm saying? This this prequel that's about to come out. You know. <laughs> yeah. Part of production. Yeah. You know, I, I'll come up. You know, if you need some behind the scenes work, just let me know. We got that's okay. you. <laughs> We see you got swag because you got a nice little thing going on with your, your look, your hair, right. the green and stuff. So your taste, that says a lot right there. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate this conversation. I'm looking forward to actually taking my mom to see the movie and having like a little girl's day. Um, oh, yeah. So best of luck for you guys with this opening release on November 24th. And um, I look forward to seeing more from all three of you guys. Thank you, Mia. We really appreciate you. What the hell are you talking about, man? You're my accountant. How could you let this happen? Our films have not been as successful as they used to be. Chance of Vision has seen its best days. Are you saying that we're broke? You're making dumb moves, baby, and it's with your father's money. We have to do something quick or this company is going to fold. The client. Did you really just pop a bottle without your favorite <laughs> daughter? You remember my daughter, Noel? I. There's gonna be a lot of changes around here. What the hell do you think you're doing to my company? You just stop it! <laughs> this is Christmas for God's sake. Like Auntie Noel. I wanna be a boss like her. I gotta make this right with Naomi. You will. But I do want you to keep a conscious mind, never to take anything for granted. Not your family, not your health, opportunity or money. Anything that can be here today and gone tomorrow. You treat me like a servant and not like your wife. I really need you. Life. Laughter. 